Hello boys and girls. I'm going to tell you the story today for our story time. And I'm going to talk about a word that we don't usually like to talk about. It's the word sin. The Bible talks about it a lot though. And we kind of need to know what it means. Do any of you know what the definition of sin is? Since you're not here, I'll have to answer it myself. It is to miss the mark. So what is the mark that this is that the that we're talking about? The mark is God's laws that he has set up in his word, and if we ever want to know what they are, we can read the Bible. He gives us his word to let us know what he's talking about and what we need to do. There's a saying that says, sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. And I'm going to read a scripture out of James 1.14. says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. This verse is talking about how sin starts small and just keeps growing. And becomes bigger and bigger. And a lot of times sin starts just in our thoughts. We think about things that we would like. Let's just... Take, for instance, if we were at school and we wanted to cheat on a test. First of all, we have to think about it. We think about, man, I don't know the answer to this question. I know that my neighbor knows it. If I just look at his paper, I could see what the answer is. And so we think about it and we think it would help us so much because then we'd get a better grade on our test. And we think that would be a good thing. So it gets, we start thinking about it and thinking about how wonderful it would be. And then we actually do look over there and we look to see what their answer is and we actually cheat. And that's when it becomes sin, is when we do it. And then, once we get by with it and nothing bad happens, the next time it's a whole lot easier to just look over there and make sure we have the answer right. And then the next time it just gets easier and it gets harder and harder to quit. And that's the way sin is. It creeps up on us and it just gets bigger and bigger. And I'm going to read you a story about the biggest bear. And I want you to think when I'm reading this story, I want you to think about how this bear is a lot like sin. Johnny Orchard lived on the farm farthest up the valley and closest to the woods. On the hill behind the barn, Johnny's grandfather had planted a few apple trees. These were the only apple trees in the valley, and they were known as Orchard's Orchard. Whenever Johnny went down the road to the store for a piece of maple sugar or something, he always felt humiliated. The other barns in the valley usually had a bare skin nailed up to dry. But never Johnny's barn. Every fall for three years, Mr. McLean had come in with a bear. And one evening, Mr. Pennell had just stepped out to the edge of his nearest field and shot three in a row as they came heading for the tall timber. It is true that Johnny's grandfather had met a bear once when he was out on the way back from picking apples. But he had gone in one direction and the bear had gone in another. When Johnny had asked him why, his grandfather had said, Better a bear in the orchard than an orchard in the bear. It was very humiliating. Johnny said, If I ever see a bear, I'll shoot him so fast he won't know what hit him. And we'll have the biggest bear skin in the whole valley. After he had gone quite a way into the woods, he came to a place where there was a big stump and something seemed to be moving in the bushes behind it. It was a bear, all right. 
He seemed hungry. So Johnny gave him a piece of maple sugar. On the way home, the bear ate all the maple sugar Johnny had in his pocket. Johnny's mother and father were a little surprised to see that Johnny had really brought a bear back with him. Johnny's grandfather said, Hump, I suppose you know what a bear likes to eat. The bear liked the milk that was meant for the calves. He liked the mash that was meant for the chickens. He liked the apples in the orchard. He liked pancakes on Sunday morning. And most especially, he liked the maple sugar Johnny brought him from the store. There was hardly anything he didn't like, and Johnny's mother got pretty upset when he started looking for things on the kitchen shelves. In the fall, Mr. McCarroll got pretty upset when, his, when the bear spent a night in the cornfield. In the winter, he had a wonderful time with the bacons and hams in the Pennell's smokehouse. It was hard enough that he emptied all the sap buckets when the McLeans were tapping their maple trees in the spring. But it was worse later when he got into Mr. McLean's shed and drank up most of the maple syrup. He was always eating, it seemed, and he grew pretty fast and got pretty big. Finally, Mr. McLean started talking to Mr. Pennell. They both went to see Mr. McCarroll. Then they all came to see Johnny and his father. What they had to say about Johnny's bear was plenty. He was a trial and a tribulation to the whole valley. And then after the neighbors had left, Johnny's father explained to Johnny that the bear would have to go back to the woods. So the next morning, Johnny started out. They walked for miles due west on an old lumber road, way past the Baldwin's Hill, to an old clearing that was overgrown with raspberries. Johnny explained to the bear that the time had come for him to go and live in the woods like the other bears. He gave the bear a last hug and started the long walk home. While he was doing the chores the next morning, Johnny saw that the bear hadn't stayed in the woods very long. So Johnny started out again, due east this time, to the Blueberry Bluff, way past Watson's Hill. And when Johnny left, the bear was eating blueberries very happily. But two days later, he was back again. This time, Johnny took him due south and got a boat and rowed two miles out in the lake and left him on Gull's Island, which is a pretty big island. But the next morning, there he was, not even very wet. Johnny and his father talked it over and they decided there was only one thing to do. Johnny said he would do it. They didn't really have to go very far, but Johnny somehow kept walking. They went north this time. There were no roads here and it was part of the woods where Johnny had never been before. At last they stopped. Johnny seemed to have a hard time getting a bullet in the gun. While he was working with it, the bear seemed to get a whiff of something. Without warning, he took off through the woods. Johnny went with him. They went through the woods so fast that Johnny lost his gun, but he held on to the rope. They seemed to be heading for a sort of little log house. They went through the doorway pretty fast and something came down with a bang and they were prisoners. When Johnny looked around, he saw the bear was happily chewing on a big lump of maple sugar that had been put in the trap for bait. Pretty soon some men came. They were a little surprised to see Johnny in there. 
They explained to Johnny that they were getting animals for the zoo in the city. They were delighted with Johnny's bear. He was much bigger than they had ever hoped for. He will have a fine place to live, and all he wants to eat, the men told Johnny, and you can come and see him whenever you want to. And I'll always bring him maple sugar, said Johnny. So this bear just kept getting bigger and bigger and he was hard to get rid of, wasn't he? The Bible says we have all sinned and falling short of God's plan. God can save us from our sin, though, because he died on the cross to pay for our sins. It's a free gift. All we have to do is tell Jesus we're sorry for our sin, and he will forgive us. And he'll wash away all our sin, and he'll cover us with his blood. So then when God looks at us, he doesn't see the sin. He just sees Jesus' blood. I am so thankful that God provided this way of salvation for me so that I can have my sins washed away. I want your, with your family, after the video gets turned off, I want you guys to talk about a few things. I want you to talk about how was this bear-like sin? And what do we do to get rid of our sin? And in Revelations 21, 7, it says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now I want to pray with you. Dear Father, I just thank you so much for each one of these children. I just ask, Lord, that you would bless them, watch over them, and protect them. And I just ask, Lord, as life seems so different right now with schools closing and we're having to do church on video i just ask that you would be there to comfort them just give them peace and i ask this all in your name amen